Today's lesson is called Complicated Borders, Day 1. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff. I am Roger, and today we're going to talk about borders in the world. Uh, usually they're pretty cut and dry. This is our country. This is your country. You stay off our country. We'll stay off yours, etc. If you want to come into our country, of course, you have to cross through border controls, show your passport and stuff like that. But in some parts of the world, it isn't so simple. So we're going to be talking about some unusual border instances in the world. Complicated borders. Yeah, in many situations, borders are nice straight lines that separate things like countries or states or counties or things like that. But sometimes borders, well, borders sometimes aren't that simple, okay? Sometimes the border between one country and another, well, it's not so clear cut. And today that's what we'll be talking about. And the day after that as well, yes, we'll be talking about complicated borders for two days. Anyways, that's enough talk for now. Let's go ahead and take a short break. And when we come back, yes, we'll start reading from an article called Complicated Borders. Complicated Borders. Imagine living in a house or even sleeping on a bed that is technically within two countries. While the situation may sound unusual, it's a part of life for some. Take the residents of Barl Nassau, for instance. Barl Nassau is located in the Netherlands, but not all of it is Dutch. That's because within its territory lies the Belgian municipality of Barl Hertog. However, Barl Hertog isn't simply one smaller area of land surrounded by a larger one. Instead, it consists of almost 30 non-contiguous parcels of land spread out in a patchwork fashion across Barl Nassau. Astonishingly, there are even additional parcels of land within Barl Hertog that belong to the Netherlands. In other words, these parcels of Dutch land are located in a part of Belgium that's located in the Netherlands. 大家好,今天第一个单字我们看到的是resident。这个字当作名词代表居民,住户的意思。例如, Michael is not a resident of this building, but he often comes here to visit his friend. Michael不是这栋大楼的住户,但他常来这里拜访朋友。再来,我们看到的单字是astonishingly。这个字当作副词代表令人惊讶的、惊人的意思。例如, Michelle lost an astonishingly large amount of money on the stock market last year. Michelle去年在股市中损失一笔惊人的金额。Okay, let's talk about the first paragraph here in our article, Complicated Borders. Of course, when things are complicated, they're not simple, and it takes a lot of mental energy to try to understand the situation. So here it begins by saying, imagine living in a house or even sleeping on a bed that is technically within two countries. Okay, is it possible to do that, to live in a house that is actually in two different countries? Or even if you sleep in a bed that is between two countries, your feet is in one country and your head, your feet are in one country and your head is in another country, that would be a rather unusual situation. Yeah, that does sound unusual, but while this situation may sound unusual, it's a part of life for some. Yeah, sometimes borders are quite complicated. Yeah, sometimes borders aren't straight lines. A very good example of this, by the way, is if you look at a map of the United States of America and the states in the United States of America, notice that the border lines between states get simpler and simpler as you move west for the most part. In the east, you've got some small, strange states and the borders are irregular and the lines are never clear cut and stuff like that. But as you move west, those lines get straighter and straighter. Like someone finally got their act together as far as the mapping was concerned. So they started drawing straight lines for borders instead of those weird, hard to chart kind of strange, complicated borders that you find in the east. Anyways, though, yes, living in a house or sleeping on a bed that is technically within two countries, well, this is a weird situation. It's an unusual situation, but this is a part of life for some people. Yeah, take the residents of Barl Nassau, for instance. Yeah, Barl Nassau is located in the Netherlands, but not all of it is Dutch. 
Yeah, there you go. You've got the name of the country, the Netherlands. Okay, now if you refer to a person who comes from the Netherlands or who lives there, you call that person Dutch or you describe them as being Dutch. Yeah, you wouldn't call a product from the Netherlands or a person from the Netherlands Netherlandish. You wouldn't call them Hollandish either. No, 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 nothing like that. Yeah, you describe them as being Dutch. How about that? How confusing. Yes, there are many names for this country, Holland, the Netherlands, so on, so forth. But if something comes from the Netherlands, if a person is from the Netherlands, is a citizen of the Netherlands, you refer to them as being Dutch. Anyways, before we move on here, let's go ahead and talk about this word resident right now, okay? What is a resident? A resident is a person who lives in a place. That's exactly right. So, of course, Barl Nassau is inside the Netherlands, but not all of it is Dutch territory. Some of it belongs to the territory of another country. Why do you ask? Well, that's because within its territory lies the Belgian municipality of Barl Hertog. Okay, so a municipality is kind of like a town here. So it's sort of town, it's a town that is actually from Belgium, but it's inside of Dutch territory. Okay, imagine that. So again, this is a community or a municipality that is actually within the jurisdiction, within the political border of the Netherlands. So gee, I wonder how they managed to go back over to Belgium to vote or something like that. Hmm, or maybe they can just vote in their own municipality. There, I'm not exactly sure, but yes, this municipality is landlocked by the Netherlands here, so it's a country within a country, but then the main country is also outside of the Netherlands or borders the Netherlands as well. I believe there's actually a term for this type of political situation. I just can't remember it right now. Anyways, that's Barl Nassau or Nassau. Yeah, my Dutch isn't very good, so I hope that my pronunciation doesn't offend anyone. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on. It says, however, Barl Hertog isn't simply one smaller area of land surrounded by a larger one. Instead, it consists of almost 30 non-contiguous parcels of land spread out in a patchwork fashion across Barl Nassau, or Barl Nassau. Anyways, folks, we've got a lot to talk about here, okay? First up, it says that it consists of almost 30 non-contiguous parcels of land. And remember, we're talking about Barl Hertog. Now, what does this mean, okay? It says it consists of something. Well, that means that this thing is made up of these things, yeah. Barl Hertog is made up of these almost 30 non-contiguous parcels of land. It consists of these things or it is made up of these things. These are its constituent elements. Then we also have the word non-contiguous, okay? Non-contiguous means not connected. Yeah, these things are separated from one another and do not form a single continuous entity. They're separated from one another by water, by another country, by a complicated border. You guys get the idea. Then last but not least, we have the word patchwork, okay? These parcels of land are spread out in a patchwork fashion across Barl Nassau. Anyways, what does the word patchwork mean? Okay, a patchwork something is a thing made up of many and varied small fragments. Exactly, especially if you're sewing, you have different kinds of cloth, different textures, different colors, different patterns, and you sew them together maybe to make a quilt or something or a wall hanging. So in this case, you just have to imagine looking down from the air and you just see little bits of land here and there as if somebody is sewing a quilt or something like that. And astonishingly, there are even additional parcels of land within Barl Hertog that belong to the Netherlands. My goodness, it's getting complicated here. So astonishingly, which means to a degree that is extremely surprising, not only are there parts of Belgium inside of 
the Netherlands, but now we've got parts of the Netherlands that are inside of parts of Belgium that are in parts of the Netherlands. So oh, it's just so complicated. I can't even explain it here clearly for all of you. So we've got all these different parcels of land, and gee, I wonder what kind of language they speak there, or if they have to talk to each other at all. Now, in other words, these parcels of Dutch land are located in a part of Belgium that's located in the Netherlands. Enough is enough. This is so complicated. If you really want to understand the situation, you should book your tickets to the Netherlands or Belgium or the Netherlands. I'm not sure which one, but go there and check it out yourself. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson. Let's move on to the next part and listen. This confusing geopolitical arrangement traces back to the Middle Ages, when Belgium and the Netherlands were still one country, and various upper-class families were claiming pieces of land for themselves. The Duke of Brabant took Barl Hertog, while the family of Nassau claimed Barl Nassau. When Belgium gained independence from the Netherlands in the early 19th century, determining international borders proved difficult. In fact, the problem wasn't fully resolved until 1995. 第二部分，我们看到的单字是 resolve。这个字当做动词，它有解决问题等或是决定的意思。例如，我们需要一个专家来解决这个电脑的问题。英文可以这么说 ：It will take an expert to help us resolve this computer problem. Okay, before the break, things really got complicated. Okay, there are parcels of Dutch land. Located in a part of Belgium that is itself located in the Netherlands. Okay, this is getting super, super complicated. We've got a country inside of a country that's inside of a country. It's like we've got a Russian egg here, a Russian nested egg, or something like that. I don't even want to think about it anymore. It's making my head hurt. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on here. Yes, this confusing. Geopolitical arrangement traces back to the Middle Ages, when Belgium and the Netherlands were still one country, and various upper-class families were claiming pieces of land for themselves. So there's a reason why this situation is so complicated. Back in the day, Belgium and the Netherlands were a single country, so there was no need for a border at all. There was no need for a national border, let's say, or a border separating Dutch people from Belgian. People, okay. So this confusing geopolitical arrangement. Well, it wasn't confusing in the past. It's only confusing now for reasons that we're going to explore in more detail coming up. Anyways, yes, this confusing geopolitical arrangement. It says traces back to the Middle Ages. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and talk about two things here. First of all, we have this word geopolitical. It's an adjective. The adjective geopolitical means of or Having to do with geopolitics, and yes, when we're talking about geopolitics, we're talking about international politics between nations, for which geography is important. Okay, so in certain situations between certain countries, geography is a point of contention or a point of concern. It comes into play, and that's where geopolitics comes in. Politics in which geography is important, and we also have this phrase to trace something back to something. Yeah, to trace back to something, or to trace something back to something. Yeah, traces back to to trace something back. That's akin to tracing something back, or following something back to its source or to its beginnings, and maybe even back in time or history, as we're doing in this case. Yes, this arrangement apparently is old and has a history that we can follow back to its origins, back then, or back, I should say, back to the Middle Ages. Right. So when did this begin? So we can trace it back a long time to the Middle Ages. No, it didn't happen after World War II or World War One. It actually goes way back to the Middle Ages, which are what about the 1200s or something like that? A period of European history there. And at that time, Belgium and the Netherlands were still one country, and various upper class families were claiming pieces of land for themselves. So that's kind of how this situation began, way back in the. 
Middle Ages, about a thousand years ago or so. Uh, you've got Belgium and the Netherlands, and you've got a bunch of rich people there too, upper class families. And they said, "Well, this is our piece of land here." And somebody else said, "Well, okay, if you want that, then we get this one." So you've got these、uh, very important people kind of dividing up the land. So, for example, here we've got the Duke of Brabant. Uh, he took Barl Hertog, while the family of Nassau claimed Barl Nassau. So again, these are different families, different dukes or whatever people in、uh, high positions claiming land for themselves, and that's kind of where this mess began. Anyways, back in the day, there was no need for a national border, but that all changed. Yes, when Belgium gained independence from the Netherlands in the early 19th century, determining international borders. Proved difficult, so there was now an international border between the country of Belgium and then the country of the Netherlands. There was a national border for Belgium that was being created there. So this is where things started to get difficult. This is where things got complicated, or this is when things got complicated. I should say. Anyways, in fact, our article continues. The problem wasn't fully resolved until 1995. Yeah, so the problem goes back to the Middle Ages, and then there were some serious issues in the 19th century, and then it took about 100 years or more for things to fully get resolved. Yeah, things didn't get fully resolved until 1995. Anyways, let's talk about what it means to resolve something. If you resolve something, you take care of a problem. You figure out a way to get rid of that problem. That's all there is to it. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Despite the confusion, the countries coexist peacefully today. Their compatible interweaving has drawn countless tourists who enjoy taking selfies of themselves with two nations in the background. 第三部分我们看到的单词是 despite。这个字当做介系词，代表尽管、不管的意思。所以我们可以说 ，despite all his training, Ivan didn't make the team. 尽管受了所有的训练。Ivan 并没有入选校队。接下来我们看到的单字是 confusion， 这个字当做名词，它有困惑或是混乱的意思。例如 ，Ray 试着解除他们的困惑，但只是把他们越弄越糊涂。英文可以这么说 ：Ray tried to lessen their confusion， but he only made it worse。再来，我们看到的单字是 coexist， 这个字当做动词，代表同时共存或是和平共处的意思。例如 ，humans and dogs have coexisted for thousands of years. 人类和狗已共存数千年。今天最后一个单字，我们看到的是 compatible。这个字当做形容词，它有和谐相处的，或是可并存的、兼容的意思。所以我们可以说 ，Though Steve and Karen lived together for years, in the end, they decided they were simply not compatible. 虽然 Steve 和 Karen 共同生活了数年，但最后他们认为彼此就是不适合。Okay, everybody. Let's talk about the final paragraph of today's lesson. It says, "Despite the confusion, the countries coexist peacefully today." So we've got this word "despite" here. That means even though a certain situation is true, still something else remains true and isn't changed as a result of that. So, despite the confusion, even though things are very confusing, you might expect things to be quite complicated, but still. The countries coexist peacefully, even though they have this problem. So, despite the confusion, the countries get along really well. We've got this confusion here. That's a noun here.、It、just refers to a situation in which things are very confused. Things are difficult to figure out, and they require a lot of discussion. And of course, it requires a lot of effort and time and patience. On behalf of the people involved to solve this problem or to resolve this problem, so even though things are confused, hey, these are mellow, laid-back Europeans. The Dutch, of course, are renowned for being pretty cool people, laid-back. They don't get up tight like the Germans or the French do so much. And、uh, yeah, the Belgians and the Dutch just kind of sat down, had a few bottles of wine, and they resolved their situation, and they get along really well these days. 
Yep, there's no more confusion now. In 1995, they buried the hatchet, so to speak. Yes, confusion. That's a situation or a state where confusion reigns, or it's a situation or a state in which a great many people are or have been confused. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now, earlier, Roger talked about the word despite. Yeah, this word despite is similar to the phrases even though, in spite of, or regardless of. And now... The Dutch and the Belgians, they coexist peacefully. There are no problems whatsoever. They exist together peacefully and tolerantly. How about that? Anyways, let's go ahead and move on and finish up our article for today. The next sentence says, Their compatible interweaving has drawn countless tourists who enjoy taking selfies of themselves with two nations in the background. How about that? Now, we've got two things to talk about before taking a break. The first of these is the word compatible. The word compatible describes people or things that exist or live together harmoniously and without strife, not unlike the Belgians and the Dutch do. Further, we also have this word interweaving. Okay, if things are interweaving or interwoven, I should say, they're kind of woven together. Yeah, interweaving is the bringing together or the meshing of separate or disparate entities. That's right. So I know here in Taiwan, people are running out of ideas for selfies all the time. So here you go, guys. Here's an idea. Book your tickets to Belgium and the Netherlands, and this will provide you plenty of opportunities to take more selfies. Who can pass up on an opportunity like that. Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Here comes our Chinese teacher. That's because within its territory lies the Belgian municipality of Barl-Hertog. That's because 加上子句是用来表达这是因为什么什么。那么课文里面的子句呢？它是用到 within its territory lies the Belgian municipality of Bar Hertog。那它是把地方副词片语移到前面的倒装句，其中的 within its territory 是地方副词片语。那么 lies 是动词 ，the Belgian municipality of Bar Hertog 是主词。那我们可以把这个子句还原成 ，the Belgian municipality of Bar Hertog lies within its territory。好，那这样的文法我们之前其实都有提过。当句子里面的主词比较长，或者是主词后面有修饰语，或是要强调地方副词的时候，你可以把地方副词或者是这个地方副词片语移到句首，然后再把动词移到主词前面来形成倒装。好，它的句型是地方副词或地方副词片语。加动词加主词。好，那比较常见的动词包含 be 动词 come、go、sit。Lie, stand, live, 等等，其中这个 sit, lie 跟 stand 不是坐着、躺着、站着哦，而是指位于哪里、坐落于哪里。那同学们在倒装句里面使用这些动词，要特别注意，动词是配合它后面的主词，而不是配合前方的地方副词。举例来说。On the table sat a two hundred year old vase. 桌上放着一只有两百年历史的花瓶。好，另外要特别注意一个重点是，如果句子里面的主词是代名词，那么主词跟动词就不用倒装了。它的句型是地方副词或地方副词片语加上主词再加动词。那这个主词是代名词，像 Here it comes。There they are. 等等，都是这样的用法。例如 ，She put on her coat and off she went. 她穿上大衣后就出发了。好，同样在课文第一部分还有一个句子是 ，Instead, it consists of almost thirty non-contiguous parcels of land spread out in a patchwork fashion across Barl Nassau. 而是由将近三十块没有紧邻的土地，像拼布一般散布在巴尔纳绍各地所组成的。好，句子里面的 non-contiguous， 它是用来形容未接壤的、没有相邻的。它的字首 n o n non 表示无或者是缺乏。那么 contiguous， 它是形容接触的或是邻近的
。再看 patchwork 这个字，它是指拼布或是拼凑的东西。那文中它用到 in a patchwork fashion， 这不是指拼布的时尚哦。Fashion 在这边它表示方式或者是样子。In a 什么什么 fashion， 或者是 in 什么什么 fashion， 表示以什么样的方式。好，以上是今天的重点整理。接着我们回顾今天的单字吧。Resident. Alex and Catherine are the residents of this house. Astonishingly, the film has done astonishingly well, earning more money than any other movie this year. Resolve. The conflict was not successfully resolved and led to war a few years later. Despite, we decided to go to the show despite the bad reviews. Confusion. There was confusion among the crowd who didn't know where to line up. Coexist. My cousins cannot coexist in the same house. They're always fighting. Compatible. My roommate and I were thankful that our two cats were compatible and got along very well. 